Hello everyone. My name is Dai Chi, and I will give you the lecture, regarding the radiation or remediation activities. So, let's start today's lecture. Today's theme is, external exposure and internal exposure. Are you ready? Mr. Daichi, excuse me, that I am eating delicious sushi, but what are you going to talk about today? Well, never mind that. We are eating sushi, so today I would like to talk about the kinds of exposure, especially the difference between external exposure and internal exposure, although I covered a bit in another lecture. So, first of all, do you understand the difference between two kinds of exposure? Yes, not with 100% sure, but I think I understand the difference. When considering the exposure to people, the exposure from the outside of the body, is called external exposure. And the exposure from the inside of the body, is called internal exposure, right? Yes, that is correct. Well done, Hickory. So, for the next. Do you know the specific pathways, or events, which cause the each exposure, external exposure, and internal exposure? Well, let me see. That should not happen, but, I can take the accidents of nuclear power plant, or terrorism, followed by the dispersion of radioactive materials into the environment, as examples. And also, the extensive dispersion of radioactive materials, triggered by the nuclear testing in the atmosphere, reminds me of the events as an example, which might cause the exposure of radiation to people. Yes, those are representative examples which cause the exposure. However, we can actually observe more examples, of external and internal exposure, in our daily life. First of all, the cosmic rays, which shower down to our Earth. Human beings on the Earth are always exposed to these cosmic rays. On the surface of the Earth, the impact deriving from these cosmic rays is softened, but when we travel by airplane, we are exposed more to cosmic rays. And for the next, even on the Earth, people are exposed to the radiation from other sources. Specifically, they are exposed to the radiation, emitted from the ground, and particles suspended in the atmosphere. In addition, people are exposed to the radiation, when taking advantage of the medical service, like CT scan, or X-ray examination. These are the examples of external exposure, to be exact. So, what about internal exposure? What kind of examples come up to your mind? Well, as I said earlier, the accident of nuclear power plant, and nuclear testing come up to my mind first. They cause the contamination of foods and drinks, that leads to internal exposure, by taking these contaminated foods and drinks. Yes, these are also the representative examples. But, as internal exposure, we daily and unintentionally take the radioactive materials into our body. For example, we could take radon into our body, when we're in our house, through inhalation and we might take radioactive materials through our skin respiration, or wound, when we get hurt. And also, the foods which we daily take, sometimes include the radioactive material. Moreover, radioactive materials are used for the medical use, for example, in case of medical tests. We are exposed to the radiation, through external and internal exposure, much more than I expected isn't is no problem, even if we are exposed so much. Okay, let me elaborate the average amount of exposure to Japanese people, in each type of source aforementioned, which I so far explained. This pie graph represents the breakdown of approximate amount of exposure to Japanese people. Medical exposure includes, both external exposure and internal exposure, so they can't be clearly distinguished. Except for medical exposure, they derive from natural radiation. So, the exposure to natural radiation is estimated as around 2.1 mSv per year, and the medical exposure is estimated as around 3.9 mSv per year. 
and totally it is estimated as around 6 millisievert per year. And this pie graph represents the average exposure dose of people in the world. The exposure to natural radiation is estimated as around 2.4 millisievert per year, and the medical exposure is estimated as around 0.6 millisievert per year. Totally it is estimated as around 3 millisievert per year. The exposure dose of Japanese people is much larger than people in other countries, and exposure deriving from radon is less than other countries. On the other hand, the medical exposure and exposure from foods are more than other countries. That's right. According to this research, the less exposure to people deriving from radon, attributes to the Japanese architecture style of residences, which are well ventilated, and prevent radon from remaining in doors of residences. And one of the reasons for the more medical exposure, attributes to more opportunities for Japanese people to take health testing, such as CT scan. And reason why, the exposure dose from foods to Japanese people is more than people in other countries, is assumed that Japanese people eat more seafoods. Really? I didn't know that. Maybe I need to cut back on eating too much sushi. No worries. Unless the foods are contaminated by radioactive materials, for example, due to the accident of nuclear power plant, it doesn't make sense that it causes the adverse effect on human health by eating foods in daily life. This is relevant to the questions earlier, but the impact on human health caused by exposure to radiation will not be determined only by the fact that we are exposed to radiation. Please remember that it depends on the quantity of exposure, the part of body which are exposed to the radiation, the kinds of radiation which we are exposed, how much time we are exposed, and so on. This health-related matters due to the exposure to radiation will be elaborated in another lecture. So, let me wrap up my lecture by providing you the key points. Today I explained the kinds of exposure to radiation, that is, external exposure and internal exposure. External exposure is caused by, not only the special cases like the accident of nuclear power plant, but also, the cosmic ray, radiation emitted from Earth, or air. And the medical exposure is also the example of external exposure, such as CT scan. On the other hand, regarding the internal exposure, not only the special cases like the accident of nuclear power plant, but also, the aspiration or skin respiration could cause it. And the dietary intake or medical exposure are elaborated as examples. The statistics regarding the exposure to Japanese people are also explained. At last, I talked about the impact on human health caused by radiation. I would like to emphasize that the exposure to radiation doesn't always lead to adverse effect on human health. It depends on the quantity or a lot of kinds of other factors. Okay, today's lecture is now dismissed. See you next time. In this channel, the useful information regarding the radiation and remediation will be provided to you. If you like it, please subscribe to this channel and do not forget to click the like button.